Well, let's talk to our security editor, Mark White, who's here. I mean, you only have to look at, at where Mr. Trump was hit to see he was millimetres from death here. Yeah, I mean, incredibly lucky. There's no doubt about that. And an indication of just how powerful the weapon was that this gunman was using is that one of those who was shot, the, the man who subsequently died, suffered catastrophic head injuries. Um, an emergency services physician who happened to be at the rally was one of the first on scene and spoke uh, and helped with the efforts to try to resuscitate uh, this man, but the, you know it was without uh, any success because of those injuries. Now, we've just had a news conference that's taken place uh, involving the FBI, uh, the ETF, the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms teams that investigate gun and explosive related crime, uh, the Pennsylvania State Police, but interestingly, not the secret who are likely, I think, to come under some criticism. Mm -hmm. We'll explain that in a minute, but let's just have a, a listen to what was said at that press conference. This evening we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. Again, at this time, we are not prepared to identify who the shooter is. Uh, we are close to that identification, and as soon as we are 100% confident in who that individual is, we will share it with the press. With that being said, also, we do not currently have an identified motive, although our investigators are working tirelessly to attempt to identify what that motive was. It was a chaotic scene. Uh, law enforcement, I believe, acted heroically, quickly identifying and, uh, and, and neutralizing the threat, as well as responding to assist the various victims. There are a lot of witnesses uh, to be interviewed, a lot of things to be processed. There were some complicators that uh, uh, hopefully the next time we speak we can describe for you, but some complicators that slowed down uh, some of the processing and the uh, uh, positive identification of the shooter. But uh, know that uh, at this time we have no reason to believe that there is any other existing threat out there. Uh, we are doing everything we can uh, to make sure that uh, this is thoroughly investigated and that if there uh, is any information developed that anyone else was involved that uh, between PSP and the FBI that will very quickly be followed up on. There are so many questions still to be asked then, aren't there? Um, basically, with all of the protection a former president has, it's very surprising that somebody got that close. You have to keep reminding yourself when you take this in that a quarter of an inch closer and things would be very, very different this morning. Yes, absolutely. And as far as his presidential Secret Service detail is concerned, uh, as a, a former president, he would have uh, had a, a very significant presid presidential Secret Service detail for the rest of his life. The fact that he is now effectively the Republican Republican candidate going forward into the November elections means that's been beefed up even further. In addition to the Secret Service, you had the Pennsylvania State Police and other assets there on scene as well. These outside events are always much more difficult for anyone who's charged with the close protection of a VIP to deal with. It's much easier for them when they're inside a venue, they can put in place the kind of mitigating factors, uh, the search parameters that allow them to ensure that people entering a venue are not carrying uh, a weapon. But when you're out in the open, people outside of the main perimeter could potentially have Yeah, you start uh, to realise how much of a nightmare yeah. it must be for the protection officers. However, the shooter appears to have um, used the gun from 
a near, fairly nearby roof. And I always thought that was, those were the <coughs> obvious places they try and clear first. Well, you're 100% right. That's exactly what happens. You've got, of course, your, your sort of inner sterile area in the immediate environs of the rally, which will be well policed or as well policed as you can with many thousands of people in that location. But outside that, you've got Secret Service snipers who are on rooftops themselves to get a vantage point. But what they do in the weeks or even months before a trip is they know in advance that um, Donald Trump or whoever it might be is going to uh, attend this event so they send uh, teams along in advance to uh, look at the, the, the potential sort of risk factors in an area, decide where they're going to put their snipers, the buildings that need to be checked and uh, kept sterile as well and certainly rooftops with a line of sight to where the former president was uh, that are not too far away would have been included, you would think, within that Secret Service assessment. And the other thing, just uh, with regard to that uh, to, to mention, is that this wasn't a built-up city where you could be talking about many dozens of buildings that you have to try and make sure, uh, with lots of windows on high-rise buildings and things like that. This was a rural area with a few farm buildings nearby. Yeah. Um, what do we know of the gunman? Um, I mean, it, it would seem the FBI have identified him, though they're not, I know they're not releasing a, a, a lot of details at the moment. Yes, absolutely. They know who the gunman is. Uh, they're not telling the media because they don't want the media crawling all over uh, the address or addresses linked to this man until they've been able to get in there and do what they need to do in terms of uh, securing the scene, making sure there are no other threats. Sometimes these people leave booby traps mm. uh, in their own home addresses or where, you know, <clears throat> they've been plotting or planning um, an event like this. I think there is no doubt we can see at this early stage that that, you know, this was pretty professional in terms of, of what has gone down. This person clearly had a, a long-barreled rifle. Uh, there are some eyewitnesses who have been telling media on the ground there that they became aware of an individual on this roof, the gunman, uh, crawling along with a, a long-barreled weapon and started shouting to uh, local law enforcement, Pennsylvania State Police there, that they can see a gunman on the roof. But for some minutes, it seems, President Trump was still allowed to get onto that stage and start speaking. See, that beggars belief. It does, absolutely. And that will form part of the investigation going forward. Now, it's possible you tell a trooper on the ground and they're looking around, they're trying to find a building, they radio something and yeah, we think there's someone suspicious on the roof. But of course, the public can mistake the likes of Secret Service snipers exactly. for, may have for that's the Secret Service yeah, indeed man. for for a gunman. So the the. It's forgivable, perhaps, that there was some kind of confusion for a, a minute or two while they got to grips with where this person was, what building they were on. I mean, he was taken out very quickly after mm. he started opening fire. But I think the so he, bigger... he was shot and killed? Yeah. He, he was shot and yeah. killed within seconds yeah. of opening fire himself. And we thought last night, I was reporting on this last night, that it was very likely, given that there were thousands of people cramped into this uh, rally, that with shots whizzing by, President Trump that others would have been hit and now we know of course yeah, that I mean, one person died. When you died. look at the scene um, Trump, uh, Trump has hit the floor um, and I've heard uh, speculation that that's what you're trained to do yeah. um, if you're a president. Um, you hit, if anything like that you hit the floor yeah. fast um, and he does that but you just shows up how vulnerable are the people around him yeah. and of course they always stack a lot of people behind him. Um, those people are incredibly vulnerable if the shooter is still shooting. Yeah, and indeed, they were just, they were stuck in place, uh, sadly, and this emergency service physician who was one of the, the first on scene to try to give medical assistance to the man who died, said he was stuck between two chairs. He couldn't do much for him because the traumatic nature of the headshot uh, was just too severe. Mm.